sunrise over the plains of Africa. Every day, this simple event brings renewal as the sun's rays warm the land and bathe the world in light. On the open grasslands of Africa, sunrise ends a night of uncertainty and fear for many animals. In the night, they are vulnerable to the stealthy predators who use darkness as their cover. When the sun rises, they face a different breed of killer. Specialist daytime hunters who use the grasslands to employ their deadly tactic, high-speed hunting in broad daylight. Some of the most fertile grasslands in Africa are the vast floodplains along the rivers of northern Botswana. Here, the nutritious grasses left by receding rivers are magnets for herds of grazing animals. One such river is the Linyanti, and along its banks at a place called Salinda is the Zabilianja Lagoon one of the world's most remote and productive wildlife refuges. The plains of Salinda are clothed with reeds and dotted with stands of wild date palms. And the waters of the lagoon draw a spectacular array of animals to this magnificently scenic spot. Where the herds congregate, predators thrive. And during the dry season, the land and the elements conspire to create the perfect conditions for daytime hunters. As the rains become a distant memory, temporary bodies of water in the interior of Botswana shrink and disappear. Animals that have spent the summer ranging over a lush, nutrient-rich environment begin to migrate closer to the few waterways that hold perennial water like the Zibilianja Lagoon. At Zibilianja, the topography joins the mixture of conditions weighing against the prey. There is only one break in the reed beds where it is safe to drink, and only one route that can be taken to get there. Weakened, thirsty animals have to make a dangerous passage to water here every day. And sure enough, opportunistic eyes have begun to covet this hunting ground. Normally hunters that rely on the cover and confusion that nighttime affords them, the lions of Zibilianja have the ability to switch to diurnal or daytime hunting. Ironically, the speed hunters of Africa evolved the ability to hunt during the day so as not to compete with the dominant predators of the night. But at Salinda, it is the lions who outcompete the specialists. And the powerful pride takes occupation of the hazardous corridor known as the Bowling Green. The Bowling Green is a flat, open floodplain flanked on one side by an extensive reed bed that forms a barrier to escape. On the other side are a number of large islands covered in vegetation. These islands are formed over hundreds of years by colonies of termites. By building mounds raised slightly above flood water level, the termites created a platform for trees and bushes to colonize, and the islands were formed. It is from these vantage points that the lions survey the hunting ground and plan their attacks. The females in this pride comprise three generations of mothers and daughters. Like most lion prides, the females are the stable unit of family life. And the ancestors of these lionesses have probably been hunting the plains of Salinda for many years. The combination of youth, experience, and strength make this a formidable team. Although the females take the lead in hunting, 
The pride is dominated by a coalition of three males. The males split up to do regular patrols of their territory, scent marking on trees and bushes to leave chemical warnings for any foolhardy intruders. They cover more ground apart, but when they get together, they show great affection for each other. The similarity in age and size of these magnificent lions is no coincidence. They are brothers that split off together from their birth pride and took over the territory of the Zibilianja females, ousting the previous males in a savage battle. The constant body contact and overt displays of affection are mechanisms for reducing aggression and keeping the bonds of the team strong. The life of a male lion is intensely violent and they'll need to stand together when challenged by other raiding coalitions. Three young females of the pride are specialists in chasing and capturing fast prey species that are usually only caught in the daytime by the speed hunters. They do this by setting a trap. One female stalks around to a termite mound in the middle of the corridor. Showing a remarkable amount of restraint, she deliberately lets the animals go past her to the water and closes off the escape route. The others move into position in the reed bed to chase the animals back along the corridor. The chasers then spring the trap and rush in to panic and scatter the herd. The female behind the termite mound holds her ground as the impala flee toward her and at precisely the right moment, lunges out from her hiding place. The rest of the pride converge on the kill. Only the strongest get to eat. And when the males arrive, the rest of the pride make way. The difference in size makes the females no competition for the males, who can weigh more than 400 pounds. When the fighting is over, it is important that the pride get back together. The contradiction of lion life is that they are social killers. They rely on each other as a team, but are highly aggressive. So relations must be mended instantly by affectionate rituals like grooming, cleaning, and body contact. the hunters go straight back to work again, as most of them have not yet eaten. This time, the whole pride takes part. Another herd of impala is moving to the water, and the lions employ the same tactics. The impala are now alert to the presence of danger, but by freezing as the prey looks in their direction, the hunters are not seen. One by one, lions are getting into position all around the herd. The setup is perfect. All that remains is to select the right target. The lead chasing female makes the first run at the prey. A male impala is cut out of the herd and begins to run the gauntlet of the trap groups.
The catching lioness puts herself at great risk in this kill. She takes the full impact of the big impala on her head and neck, and then holds on to the struggling animal with a single claw as it cartwheels over her. This particular female has a great deal of experience at positioning herself for the kill. This time, she was again in the right place, and as the other females join her, she makes sure the impala is dead with a strong throat bite. This killing bite is usually used to subdue larger prey that may be dangerous to the lions. But even with smaller prey, the strong instinct to kill takes over. It also keeps the animal from giving distress calls that would alert the males to the kill hidden in the reed bed. The massive shoulder and forelimb strength of the lion and the huge curved retractable claws suit this kind of killing where struggling prey must be quickly subdued. Once satisfied the impala is dead and silent, the lionesses begin licking the skin with their rough tongues. They do this to remove fur and soften an area where they can break into the tough skin with their cutting teeth. After a successful day's hunting, the pride settles down in the late afternoon to do what lions do best, sleep. Energy is a precious commodity in the lion world. It is hard to come by, and when gotten, must be carefully conserved. So lions do a lot of sleeping. The Zibilianja pride, supremely dominant in the corridor area, are completely dead to the world. Protected from man, they have no enemies here, and the only sign of life is an occasional twitch. While the lions sleep, other residents of Salinda are going about their everyday business. The baboon troop is foraging for delicacies on the water's edge where the receding river has exposed the shoots of succulent water plants. During the heat of the day, they head over to the cover of one of the islands. While the adults are taking a break, the mischievous youngsters find some low bushes in which to practice their particular skill, having fun. When the sun goes down over the lagoon, it signals the end of activity for the daytime hunters. At other times of the year, the lions are mostly active at night. But with the opportunities they are getting in the day, the night is left to other hunters. The leopard is Africa's most specialized nighttime hunter, using a cloak of darkness to stalk, ambush, and kill. 
The dark allows the stalk and pounce hunter to get close to its prey undetected and swiftly overcome it. If a leopard is unsuccessful at night and continues to hunt into the daytime, it is likely to experience some of the problems that the daytime specialists face. First among these is that you are obvious to all other animals. Many sharp-eyed sentries with good vantage points, such as tree squirrels and baboons, will readily give an alarm call to announce the presence of a predator. Although this primarily serves to warn members of their own species, other animals under threat also pick up on it. The impala that are being stalked are even more alert than normal, and once they see the leopard, they also begin to give alarm snorts. Robbed of the element of surprise, the leopard lacks the tools to pursue prey in the open and retires to wait for night to once more make her invisible. While sunrise in Africa is normally a cue for the leopard to retire, it is also a signal for the world's most specialized daytime predator to begin its day. The cheetah replaces the strength and stealth of the leopard with the ultimate daytime hunting tool, speed. The open grasslands of Salinda, dotted with the cover of the islands, is ideal habitat for a mother cheetah and her two young cubs. She hunts the plains away from the corridor dominated by the lions. As dawn breaks, she is already active. The cool of the early morning is the optimum time to hunt. If she can possibly kill before the sun gets too high, the family will be able to rest up through the hottest part of the day. Cheetahs rely totally on their eyesight to locate their prey. The female uses high vantage points to scan the plains, and the cubs learn this technique along with mother. The open grasslands allow cheetah the best opportunity to hunt their fleet-footed prey. Here, they can chase at high velocity with no obstacles to impede progress, while keeping an eye on an equally fast-moving target. The two cubs are approaching a critical part of their development. Now is the time when they begin to train their bodies and learn the skills needed for high-speed capture of prey. Cheetah mothers often initiate play with their young inviting them to chase her tail and try to keep up. There are usually two or more cubs in a litter, and as the cubs grow, they spend more and more time chasing and tackling each other. All of this play involves instinctive behaviors that they will hone into hunting skills by watching their mother hunt. For the cheetah's hunting technique is the most highly specialized of all the big cats. Of all Africa's large predators, the cheetah is the most perfectly adapted for daytime hunting. This is an animal engineered purely for speed, and the velocity it can generate with this remarkable body is unparalleled among the world's land predators. Gone are the thickly muscled shoulders, 
neck, and forelimbs of the stalk and pounce hunter. They are replaced by long, thin limbs with muscles bunched close to the body. These light limbs swing quickly through the air during a sprint. Even the tail is specially shaped like a long, flattened paddle, which acts as an air rudder, helping the cheetah change direction in a split second at high speed. Instead of large, curved, retractable claws for digging into struggling prey, the cheetah's paws are tipped with straight, non-retractable nails that act in the same way as a sprinter's spiked shoes, allowing greater traction at high speed. The back paws dig into the ground, the spine flexes, and the hind legs explode the cheetah forward in a series of powerful leaps that take it up to 70 miles an hour in a few seconds. At the end of the rainy season, the Salinda cubs are almost full grown and are hunting effectively with their mother. The help from the cubs and the extra mouths to feed lead to the cheetah mother targeting larger prey. She is pushing her capabilities to the limit and the result is a display of the ultimate speed predator at the peak of its craft. Unlike the lions, cheetah do not have the tools to get involved in extended struggles with strong prey animals. It lacks the armory of the other big cats, and with non-retractable claws, there's no way to hold on to the animal with its forelimbs. The female is in a dangerous situation while wrestling with the frantic Impala ram. As its horns graze perilously close to her flanks, she could be gravely injured at any moment. One of the cubs rushes in to help and attempts to sweep the Impala's feet from under him. Eventually, it takes all three of them to subdue their prey. Again, the cheetah cannot grip with its claws, so the animal is strangled with a throat bite. This shuts off the air passage, and the impala dies quickly, as its body is already starved of oxygen from the chase. The cheetah, too, is in serious oxygen debt, but its specialized skull houses huge nasal passages, much larger than those of the lion. While still maintaining a tight stranglehold on its victim, the cheetah is able to fill its massive lungs with air to replace oxygen burnt in the intense activity of the chase. Bloodied but victorious, the cheetahs begin to feed voraciously. They know that soon their activity in the long grass will be detected by the daylight hunter's worst enemy, the ever watchful vulture. As soon as the first vulture descends, the cheetah are involved in a race against time because every other predator and scavenger in Salinda is a student of the sky. They know that these birds will lead them to easy pickings if they can get there quickly enough. Because of the attention vultures bring to them, cheetah have more than 60% of their kills pirated by other predators. Today, it is a mating couple from the Zibilianja pride who have followed the aerial clues. 
As the lions run in, the cheetah take no chances. They are no match for the bigger cats and abandon the kill hastily. The vultures and jackals are next on the feeding list and have a small window of opportunity before the lions arrive and quickly take advantage. The lioness, knowing her time at the kill will also be limited, rushes ahead of her suitor. She too must eat quickly because the kill is about to change hands yet again. The social niceties of courtship do not extend to an empty belly in the lion world. The scavengers will hang around to clean up any scraps. Mating lions stay together for up to five days, during which time they will not eat, so both of them are extremely lean and hungry. The male moves the kill away to enjoy his meal in peace. The lioness will have to make do with the blood left at the kill site. The vultures have drawn in another intruder. One of the brothers arrives at the kill site. Possession is the law at a lion kill. And in this case, the male with the kill has already established his dominance in previous encounters. He will not be challenged and will quite easily eat the 80 pounds of meat left on the carcass. The pressure from competition with the lions drive the cheetah even further from their prime hunting area. And eventually, the cubs split off on their own. The mother, with her experience, is also able to change her hunting style and has begun hunting in the broken woodlands at the edge of the plains. The trees and bushes in this habitat not only slow down the pursuit hunter, but can cause injury at high speed. When she kills, her nervousness is apparent. She cannot keep on losing kills to other predators, so any noise her prey makes must be cut short, and she stays as well hidden as she can. While the two other lion brothers are away in the territory of the cheetahs, the third member of the coalition is involved in an interaction with Africa's other specialist daytime hunter, the wild dog. A pack of wild dogs has moved into the corridor area to hunt, and they are beginning to have more and more encounters with the lions. Lions are the dog's most dangerous competitor and are responsible for more wild dog deaths than any other African predator. With their agility and speed, the pack can quite easily handle a single lion on its own. But the increased contact with the Zibilianja pride is worrying. The lead female of the pack is about to give birth. They must find a safe area for her to have pups so they leave the corridor to seek out a secure den site. 
where the cheetah is a sprinter using blinding speed, the wild dog is a distance runner using stamina to run down prey. Their rangy bodies are also perfectly adapted for their style of hunting. Long, thin legs, deep chest, powerful muscle with massive teeth, and no spare weight. Even the middle two toes on each foot are fused together to give better traction on the run. They are capable of spectacular turns of speed, but it is the power of the pack as a hunting unit that is their special secret. The pack is dominated by an alpha male and female, and it is only these two individuals that breed. The rest of the dogs help raise the pups by hunting. Once a safe den site is found, the female gives birth underground, and within a couple of weeks, the pup's eyes are open and they are brought out to play around the den. While the pups are very young, their mother or another babysitter will stay behind to protect them at the den while the others are out hunting. This is a job that requires endless patience and a high pain threshold. Wild dogs use the edges of the day. In the hotter months, most of their hunting is done in the early morning or late evening, when the air is still cool. The most intensely social of Africa's large carnivores, wild dogs always begin their day with important social bonding rituals. There is a complicated repertoire of dominant and submissive gestures, such as dogs approaching others with lowered forequarters, flattened ears, and wagging tails held high. More dominant individuals generally keep their body position higher than others, while lower ranking members lie on their back, exposing their bellies, or crawl beneath the neck and belly of more dominant dogs. All this body language reestablishes hierarchy every day and helps give everyone a place in the pack. Once the morning greetings have been completed, the pack gets down to business and sets off to hunt. They cover huge distances in search of prey with a restless and efficient trot that is kept up for hours on end. Their hunting method is a simple one. In a chase, they can outlast any other animal on four legs. Once a chase is initiated, the pack seldom misses. They flush a reed buck on the river's edge, and one of the faster females sticks close behind it. Reed buck are river-dwelling antelope, powerful runners in swampy conditions, but out in the open, their bulkiness leaves them vulnerable to speed hunters. When it begins to tire, the reed buck turns toward the water and reeds, normally a place of refuge from predators, but this is a mistake with wild dogs. The water slows the exhausted reed buck down and the rest of the pack begin closing in. The dogs eat very quickly by bolting down large chunks of meat. This behavior allows them to finish eating and leave the scene quickly. 
It also helps them store meat that is later regurgitated for pups and babysitters left back at the den. As usual, the vultures are quick to spot the new kill and immediately begin descending. This unwelcome intrusion is dangerous because of the attention it draws. For this reason, at any kill, dogs chase vultures off with great determination. In the Salinda area, however, vultures are the least of the pack's worries. Some of the other local scavengers have become wise to the dog's eat and run tactics and have developed their own method of ensuring a meal. A number of hyenas from the resident clan simply fall in and follow the pack wherever they are hunting in the clan's territory. This seldom observed behavior suggests that these mostly nocturnal individuals have specialized in pirating kills from the dogs during the daytime. They rest when the dogs rest and follow along when the dogs hunt. There is little the pack can do about this, and as a result, they often lose part of their kill to the more powerful hyenas. When the dogs kill, the noise of the interaction will often alert the rest of the clan who come rushing in to take part in the meal. <laughs> the dogs are not intimidated by the hyenas and stand their ground. Getting injured by trying to win the kill back is not worth the risk. This seemingly cowardly scavenging is unfortunately the way hyenas are largely perceived. But in fact, they are masterful opportunists, adapting their behavior to suit circumstances. Their powerful jaws allow them to feed on parts of kills that other predators cannot use. The clan has been feeding on the carcass of an elephant and have carried off some of the larger bones. By hiding the bones under the surface of the water, they can return and feed at will. Sloping hindquarters and immense leverage power in the jaws show how well adapted this animal is for traveling while carrying heavy objects. Despite the common misconception, scavenging is not the hyena's only way of making a living. They are also skillful and powerful social hunters, sometimes even taking the very same prey as their arch rivals, the lions. At the beginning of the dry season, many of the herd animals have young, which are targeted by all predators. Zebra herds are using the corridor to get to water and are often ambushed in the low scrub by the Zibilianja lions. The adult zebras deliberately let the baby run ahead, lagging behind to block the high-speed attack. The lioness will not risk injury from dangerous kicks, and the zebra make good their escape to the more familiar comfort of the open plains. It is here, when the zebra are exhausted from their narrow escape, that the clan takes up the chase. 
Zebra are powerful adversaries. Well-aimed kicks and bites have cut short the career of many a predator. But hyenas are relentless and fearless once roused. There is little the adult zebras can do without further endangering themselves. This is a bountiful time for the hyenas, as they hunt the young of many species of plains animals. Their success brings good fortune to another predator lower down on the hierarchy, the black-backed jackal. Like the hyenas, jackal also tend to be more nocturnal, but will turn up at the kill of any other predator hoping to glean scraps from the messy competition at social kills. They are nimble and quick, able to deftly avoid the flashing jaws of the larger and clumsier hyenas. As it gets closer to the dry season, jackals tend to become more diurnal and hunt a lot more, targeting birds, rodents, and other small mammals. They have to supplement their scavenging at this time of year because there are more mouths to feed. Male and female jackals form lifelong bonds, and this pair are parents of a new litter of tiny pups. The pups are raised in an underground den, and before long are active around the den site. This is a dangerous time for the youngsters, as the parents are often away hunting to keep up with the appetites of their hungry offspring. They are at grave enough risk out in the open during the day but even their underground refuge is sometimes not enough to protect them. The buildup of scent in the area has attracted some deadly attention, and on return from the hunt, the parents are faced with a disastrous situation. The keen senses of an African rock python have drawn it to the unwatched pups. the snake deliberately blocks the hole with the rear of its huge 15-foot body, cutting off the pup's only escape route. Slowly, it begins to inspect the interior of the burrow for a victim. There is little the frantic parents can do against a foe that is as dangerous to them as it is to their threatened family. As the snake constricts with its body, it keeps the adults at bay with its head while still blocking the hole. The python is able to swallow such large prey by completely separating its upper and lower jaws and stretching the skin of its neck over the victim. While squeezing the meal down its body with powerful muscles, it tries to re-hinge its upper and lower jaw. The python could quite easily kill and eat every pup in the litter. But seeing its vulnerable state, the desperate parents step up their harassment of the massive serpent and bravely drive it away. Although they have lost one of their offspring, the jackals have been lucky. Undisturbed, the snake would have killed every one of the pups, and it is likely to return, so the litter must be moved. Experience is hard-earned, but this time they have chosen a less obvious site, 
dug at the base of some bushes which will conceal the activity above ground. Once the family is settled, the parents leave the pups to their games and resume their feeding duties. After a successful early morning hunt, the father brings back a freshly killed guinea fowl, which the pups devour with gusto. Only recently started on solid food, they take to their carnivorous diet instantly. When the parents have a long distance to cover on the way back to the den, they use a trick especially adapted for daytime predation. They swallow the meat first before heading home. This achieves two purposes. Firstly, no one will try and rob them of food they are carrying in their mouths. And secondly, it will not attract the attention of a sly predator who would follow them back to the den knowing they were feeding pups. Once back at the den, the fresh meat is regurgitated for the excited offspring. Constantly vigilant now, the parents have an excellent chance of raising their entire brood safely. The complex web of interactions between all of Celinda's diurnal predators is drawn tighter as the year moves deeper into the dry season. The lions still control the hunting grounds, and the attendant scavengers, including the jackal pair, are a constant presence. Vultures and marabou storks never leave the area now as the lions are killing larger prey and the pickings are good. The harsh sun and strong winds of winter have drained the earth of all its moisture and dust clouds hang permanently over the parched landscape. For the Zabiliangel lions, this only brings more opportunity. The dust and the wind create an eerie, confusing atmosphere. The smell and the sounds of the lion's presence are covered up by the wind, and the dust cuts down visibility. The conditions allow the pride to hunt prey that would normally be too fast for them. They display the versatility and hunting method that is the key to their success by developing a system of relay hunting, more often seen in wild dogs. When the young females begin the chase, the pride has already lined itself up in a gauntlet along the river's edge. The warthogs are now blocked by the water on one side and lions on the other. They can only run straight ahead. And as each lion finishes its stretch of the run, the next one takes over. As the exhausted hogs begin to tire, the specialist killer moves in. The areas around the lagoon have been grazed to dust, and the long daily journeys from feeding grounds to water drain the energy of the larger prey species. 
The lions use their newly developed relay technique to take advantage of the conditions and have begun to target these heavier bodied antelope. Sensing the weakness in their prey, the faster females in the pride have taken to the very unlion like behavior of pursuit hunting. Under normal circumstances, lions will give up a chase after only a few seconds. But here, the relay system lets a fresh lioness take over on a fast hiring kudu bull. The reward for determination far outweighs the risks of failure. As they make more and more kills, the lion's strength and stamina grows as that of their prey is dwindling. Opportunities are taken as they arise and the pride is operating like a well-oiled machine. When a herd of sable antelope arrive on the corridor, the lions slip back into ambush mode. On their way down to the water, the sable pass by the females, hiding in their normal position. While the herd is drinking, the catching groups emerge from the reeds and close off the escape route. Even the two yearling cubs in the pride are present as part of their education. The only way out now is back past the lions, and again, the trap is sprung. The chasing females scatter the herd and target the young sable calves running ahead of their mothers. Amidst the chaos that ensues, the herd bull returns to help the youngsters, placing himself in the way of the catching group. As the chasing females pursue the calves, the bull has fallen to the rest of the pride. Exhausted, the remaining calf is expertly captured by a determined lioness. With its rapier-like horns, the adult sable is still dangerous to the lions, and its brave attempt to fend off the pride is quickly ended. Multiple kills are common during the last weeks of the dry season, and the lions will take full advantage of these easy times. For all the expertise the lions show in their daylight hunting technique, it is still highly unusual behavior, dictated by the perfect conditions for them at Salinda in the winter. As the seasons begin to change, the warm winds of spring stir the palm trees along the edge of the lagoon. Rains have already begun to fall further south, and the concentrations of game have dispersed into the interior of Botswana. For the daylight specialists of Salinda, this will allow freedom of movement on the plains around the lagoon, as the lions become more nomadic and nocturnal. The wild dog pups are growing rapidly. These youngsters are the future of the pack. From this group of pups will come the next generation of hunters. The fastest runner, the most skillful stalker, the best mother, and the next leader of the pack 
are all here. For the cheetah, the rainy season also brings good fortune. Since splitting off from their mother, the two young cubs, both males, have formed an alliance, as siblings often do. Well-fed and well-taught by their mother, it is likely that they will dominate this area for quite some time. The Zibilianja pride, however, is entering a more testing period. Their daylight ambush tactics will no longer work as the concentrations of animals move away from the lagoon. Water is now abundant throughout the area, and the prey species are widely dispersed. The lions will have to take to the night and search for their food. The day will once again belong to the specialists that hunt in broad daylight. Mm-hmm. 